Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense. Hope you're doing well. It's time to talk about a little bit of oud today, a little funky bud oud. We're gonna talk about seven of the best designer oud fragrances that you can buy. Now, oud, as I kind of alluded to just a second ago, talking about funky butts, <laughs> is a note that a lot of guys are, are you know, antsy to check out if they've never worn an oud fragrance or bought one. That's because oud has a reputation that precedes it. You'll hear oud mentioned as being fecal sometimes. And when I say that, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Like feces, like a poo. And sometimes people will say it's animalic or funky or barnyardy or pissy. You'll get all these descriptions and if you're just somebody who wants to smell nice and somebody says, hey, you gotta try this oud, it's great. It's barnyardy, pissy, fecal, and dirty and animalic. You're gonna love it. Your first reaction is not gonna be, hey man, I'm actually going out on a first date tonight. <laughs> Spray me 25 times with that, please. I'm sure it'll go over great. So there is that reputation that you have to overcome when you're first trying out oud scents. And these ones today, are all pretty easy. This is kind of like your entry level, your first step down that dark path of, of oud despair that eventually leads you to, to spend $300 on an atar that, that's like, like this big. I tried oud once and now look at me. Uh, never, never try it. Nah, I'm just playing, do try it. Let's jump into it, let's check these out. I'm gonna try to bust through these, not take too terribly long because I'm a bit of a windbag sometimes. So let's kick it off with Versace Oud Noir. This is one of my favorite designer ouds. Love the presentation, love the smell. I've talked about this one a bunch of times. I uh, got samples of this when it was brand new and then immediately bought a bottle as soon as I ran through all my samples of which there were 10. It has uh, saffron, cardamom, and pepper along with that oud. So here you're getting a warm, spicy, sexy, classy, uh, easy to wear oud scent. Definitely that westernized style of oud. And this one is a little bit similar to Tom Ford's oud wood. It's in the same ballpark, especially when you smell them like this. Ah, pretty similar. As they dry down, they do go differing ways, but I mean, just check that out. They've even got the, the color scheme down. It's like they, they matched at the party or to go to the party. So Versace Oud Noir, love that scent. I think it's absolutely worth checking out and uh, it kind of ticks all the designer Oud boxes for me personally. And next up, we're doing Boss Bottled Oud. Now this one is going to appeal to you a lot if you're a fan of Boss Bottled. That cinnamon and apple that the original has, you're gonna find that in here also, just with oud sprinkled in as well, giving it a little bit of a darker touch. You also have saffron in here as well, and that's something you're gonna see a bunch with these fragrances. Oud plus saffron. Those notes go together like uh, peanut butter and jelly. They just, they're copacetic. Now, I wanted to keep this for the most part more affordable, assuming that you're shopping at a discounter. So there are gonna be some oud fragrances that are designers technically, well, like Tom Ford oud would. A lot of people would consider that a designer fragrance since it's from Tom Ford or Gucci Intense oud. There are gonna be fragrances like that that I leave off of here just because they are so expensive. And with that in mind, we're gonna go with a more affordable option here, Vince Camuto oud. Little overlooked, Vince Camuto, not a house that a lot of people get jazzed about. Not a lot of people freak out and go, oh my God, Vince Camuto is my favorite. Most people don't care. And when you look at the bottle, it kind of makes sense. It's a little cheap looking, I feel like. But this one is a surprisingly very good entry level designer oud fragrance. Very wearable, very versatile. There's also Vince Camuto smoked oud. That one trends more unisex and it adds in a good amount of rose. So if you do want a nice smoky rose oud designer fragrance, check out Camuto Smoked Oud. But if you don't care for that, go for this one instead. So you've got oud, saffron, pink pepper, leather, and amber as some of the notes in the fragrance. So you're once again getting uh, a very wearable, non-skanky oud, basically a, a semi-dark woodsy note, along with a good amount of spice in here, a little bit of warmth and uh, resinous sweetness from the amber also. 
quality is higher than you would expect in the fragrance itself. The reason your expectations would be low is again, the presentation and the cost is usually not that much from discounters, but very good for fall and winter, this one. And from Commuto Oud, we go to Varvados Oud. Yeah, the bottle is flashier here, but yeah, it's still kind of cheap. When I first saw this online, when it was first announced, I thought that this was a, a sweet kind of chain link around the bottle, almost like golden chain mail on my bottle of oud protecting it. Then you get it in and it's, it's plastic. This one does have a little more of a punch than Commuto Oud off the top. It's got a little more character to it, I would say. Commuto Oud, very easy to wear though. As I mentioned before, there's nothing wrong with it, but this one has some tobacco and incense. Actually, it's got a lot of different notes. You've got a resins in here like myrrh, spices. You basically, you just have more going on here is what I mean to say. The opening can be a little bit more divisive with this than Commuto Oud, but it is still a very nice fragrance the quality quite high and it was really expensive if memory serves correctly when it first came out uh, retail i think it was quite a lot so for the first maybe year or two that this was on the market it was high end at least as far as designer fragrances go i mean to say at the time performance could probably be a bit better for an oud fragrance i mean it's not terrible but it could be a little better. A lot of Barbados fragrances are like that, so what are you going to do? And I would say Barbados Oud is, is kind of a step further than Commuto Oud. Like Commuto Oud is that, that real entry level, super easy to wear. And then if you want something that's a little bit more interesting, a little more going on, you could take the next step to Barbados Oud. Next, we're talking about one from Latafa Perfumes. This was hyped heavily when it first came on the scene. That hype kind of died down, but it still is a very good release. It's Rogba. Now, the bottle looks like crap. It looks just super cheap. This cap is just, I mean, nothingness. And then, like I said, this is, it's got nothing going on. Also, uh, Rogba Wood Intense, also worth checking out. So that one also, I'm not gonna include that in here because then we start going a, a bit longer than I want to, but Rogba Wood Intense, if you want something that is woodier than this one, I mean, big surprise, it's Wood Intense. Check that one out. I actually think that that one is fantastic. Now, Rogba is really sweet. It's got vanilla, it's even got a sugary kind of feel to it, sandalwood, incense, and of course, that oud note that ties it in with everything here. This smells a bit similar to Scent Story 24 Gold, which is also a fragrance that got hyped very heavily. With the amount of sweetness that this fragrance has, uh, some people may not like that because it can be potentially cloying. It's, it's pretty strong. And uh, if you go heavy with this, <laughs> it's gonna set your head on fire. You're gonna fill your head full of smoke, man. You're just gonna be all. And there are some people with Rogba that do get a little bit of that, that kind of pee vibe that, that Oud can sometimes have. Some people get that with Rogba. Do I personally? No, I don't. Maybe, maybe if you go crazy, crazy with the trigger, maybe then I might pick that up a little bit, but as long as it's worn with a normal amount of fragrance, I don't get that. Probably just turned a lot of people off of Rogba, but I, I don't mean to. I think it's a great scent, especially for the price. It doesn't cost much at all. It's got a lot of power, a lot of sweetness. It's got an intention grabbing kind of feel to it. Just don't go nuts in the butts with the atomizer. You'll be okay. Now we move to a clone fragrance. So this is the only one here that's really just a straight up clone, but because of the price, I'm gonna put it in with these designers. And I guess Latafa Rogba, some people might consider that clone-ish, but. It's uh, Afnan Supremacy and Oud that we're gonna talk about next. Oud, Saffron, Patchouli, and Nutmeg, some of the notes in here. This is a clone of Initio's Oud for Greatness, which if you know anything about that fragrance, it is crazy expensive. Most people, you know, working a nine to five, <laughs> they see a, a fragrance and they go, oh man, that, that sounds interesting. Or they hear it talked about, it sounds interesting. Let me look it up. And then they, they see that price tag and just, uh, 
because the Oud for Greatness, uh, that's gonna run you $375. That's a lot, man. I mean, it's a good fragrance. Smells great, lasts a long time. People seem to love it. You know, get a lot of good compliments from it, but 375 is a lot of money. Enter Supremacy and Oud. This surprisingly smells really close to Oud for Greatness. Of all the different clones of Oud for Greatness that I've smelled, this is the best one. As far as the quality of the scent goes, the performance, how close it gets you to the original, this is your best bet. This stuff slaps, it's really good. And on top of all that, the bottle, pretty nice too. I like the gradient, cap is a little bit weird, but other than that, it's nice. This is great stuff. I've talked about this before also, but uh, there was a time uh, years ago, many years ago at this point that clones were starting to take off and you would get them in and spray it side by side with the original and go, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of, kind of similar, uh. but a lot of clones had this cheapness to them, really harsh around the edges, really synthetic smelling, uh, very alcoholy in the top and overall just didn't have that quality. It just wasn't there. They were, they were pretty harsh, pretty crappy. But as time has gone on, these clone houses are getting better at duping other people's stuff to the point that they're getting it really close. And most of those issues from the past have been remedied. And this is one of those cases where you smell this clone and you just go, man, they really ripped that off well. <laughs> All right, last one. Dolce & Gabbana, the one mysterious night. I had to put officially at least one rose oud saffron scent into this mix, and this is the one. On top of those notes, it also has amber and uh, tonka. It follows with the, the one DNA in that it's a spicy, warm, sexy kind of scent made for date nights, made for nights out, made for cool weather, made for attention, compliments, all that stuff. This whole line this exclusive line that they have, very good. We've got the one Royal Night, Mysterious Night, Luminous Night, all of those are worth picking up. And they're actually some of the best fragrances in the whole The One lineup. Yeah, they're really that good. So if you wanted a Rose Oud Saffron fragrance that's pretty easy to wear with good versatility and cool weather, I'd suggest this one. And as an added bonus, it's not that much from discounters and the only people, at least in the US, that are gonna own this are people that really know about fragrances because you're not gonna find this at Macy's or Ulta or Sephora. So there we go guys, seven great choices to get you started if you're looking for some designer ouds. Let me know in the comments some designer ouds that you yourself enjoy, whether it's one or a bunch, let me know. As always, thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.